Um, I'll be brief. I recognize you have a long agenda. Uh, so the answer to the question about critical race theory is simple. We don't teach it. We never have. Um, and there is a lot of emotion across the country about this issue. Every single thing we teach is publicly available and developed by the Virginia Department of Education. So we don't teach it. Uh, quite frankly, um, we're trying to recover from a pandemic. So most of our focus is on unfinished learning. We've been 18 months for not having kids in school. That's our focus. Uh, so I would challenge you. I, I did share. I would invite the public to go to our website. Our, our st standards of learning information is available on the website and accessible to the public. Um, there is a history and social science page on our website, and there's information about the courses that are taught in history and social science. As a matter of fact, you have a member of, of our team on your board of supervisors who I think is relatively familiar with, with our curriculum. So with that, I'll go directly to uh, Mr. Snelling's questions about um, the writings of Ibram Kendo and Robin D'Angelo. The question was, are those materials made available to teachers and staff and students? In Stafford County, the answer is no, it's not part of our curriculum. Um, there was also a question about a 911 sensitive, sensitivity training video that was recently on the VDOE website. If you saw the news last week, you know that's been taken down. It's, our teachers aren't a part of that. Um, question about uh, teacher orientation, that was also uh, on our website, the things we do for our teacher orientation. I will just share with you that because I'm still, I keep calling myself new to Stafford County, but I've been here more than a year now. But I did spend two days in our new teacher orientation because I wanted to learn firsthand what we do for our teacher orientation. And there was no discussion about white privilege in our teacher orientation. As a matter of fact, I'll just share this with you as an insight. Um, you know that all of us are struggling across the country to find teachers. I really believe what we're doing here in Stafford County to support new teachers is going to make a difference on attention. We do quite a bit to support our new teachers. Mr. Cohen, I don't know if you've had that experience, but we do quite a bit to support our new teachers. And as a matter of fact, I'll just share with you, we did have one of our new teachers from Fairfax said, if I had gotten this in Fairfax, I would have stayed in Fairfax for a year. So we do a, a lot. We don't just work with them at the beginning of the year. We work, them, work with them all year long to, to ensure that we're supporting them. And then the last question is, um, are any teachers or staff or students asked to identify their, by their pronoun? That is not a directive or an expectation has been set by any of our staff in Stafford County. So I think there's a lot of information out in the media that may lead people to believe that we're doing some of those things. We're not. Um, I want to real quickly, there are two Senate bills, uh, Senate, uh, two General Assembly bills, rather, that were passed this year, um, uh, Senate Bill 1196 and House Bill 19, 1904. And those two bills focus on cultural competency training for school staff. And if you're in, you want to learn more about cultural competency training, that really is looking at the diversity of the students we serve and making sure that, that we're prepared to serve all students. Um, and then finally, um, there is a new African American history elective that's offered. Uh, that course will be offered in the spring of 20, 2021. And we are st still awaiting um, some guidance from the VDO VDOE on that course. So with that, hopefully I haven't taken much of your time. Go ahead, Mr. Snellings. Dr. Jones, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm the individual that initiated this, as I'm sure you know. And I initiated it because I was getting questions and comments from my constituents. Right. And I was asking questions of certain people, and I was not getting answers. So back about a month, six weeks ago, I asked Dr. Kisner to come over. And of course, that didn't happen, partially our fault or my fault, and of course, with his illness and his retirement. So I appreciate you being here today. Um, we had a lady at our last meeting stand where you're standing. Mm -hmm. She's a, a parent at well, Brook Point High School saying that her children were specifically asked to identify their pronoun, which really concerns me. Mm -hmm. When I look at your emails from you, um, you sign your email, Stanley B. Jones, EDD, uh, and then in parentheses, you put he, him, his. So you are identifying your pronoun, correct? I, I am. So are other teachers or any teachers in your system asking a student to identify their pronoun? Not to my knowledge. Not to your knowledge. You can assure us that that won't happen. Well, I can't control what an individual teacher may do. I can tell you, like I've said before, 
we have not directed our staff to do that. That is not an expectation. So you don't you don't think that's happening? I didn't say that. I said we haven't directed our staff to do that. <laughs> okay. And it isn't an expectation. Okay. Well, it's not an expectation, but it's obviously it's happening, uh, and that concerns me. Um, going back to this Department of Education, Virginia Department of Education, 9-11 uh, sensitivity training. I don't know if the audience knows what that is or not, but it is shameful that the Department of Education in Virginia would authorize this to be shown to our teachers. It tells people in that video that those 19 terrorists were not terrorists. They were extremists. That the United States of America is not an exceptional country. We're just like anybody else. It went on for an hour and a half. Now, you're saying your teachers never saw that. To my knowledge, our teachers never saw that. You may be aware that was taken down. Um, it was taken. It was up it last was, week taken down. It was taken down yeah. because the Virginia Department of Education got so much heat they couldn't handle it. Uh, so they took it down. My concern, and this is not with you, my concern is with our Department of Education. I mean, what's going through their minds? In Fairfax, the gentleman that wrote this book, Ibram Kenty, uh -huh. you familiar with him? I am. Fairfax County paid him $20,000 for a video. $20,000. Now, this is not Fairfax. They also bought his book and gave it to all the teachers. Prince William County is having the same issues. And if you go through this book, I hope you read it. It is unbelievable. Well, I'm, I'm, again, I'm going to be candid with you. I'm focused on unfinished learning for and Stafford I, County Public Schools. I appreciate that. And I'm, really and I'm here to represent Stafford County Public and, Schools. And you believe, can't speak to what any other school division Believe me, Doctor, they don't expect you to. But yeah. I'm concerned that some of this stuff seems to be sifting down. Uh, I mean, you know, when I grew up here, we weren't part of Northern Virginia. Uh, in the last 20 years of my life, we all of a sudden part of Northern Virginia. So I, it really concerns me. So if we have your assurances that this is not going to happen, um, and the school board's assurances, I, I think that's what this board is looking for, at least what I'm looking for, and I think it's what our constituents are looking for, um, that this just won't happen in our school system. Well, again, I can't, I can't control the individual decision of any staff member. Uh, I will say this about our staff in terms of the curriculum. Um, and it's, Mr. Cohen knows this, the Virginia Department of Education and the state has set the parameters under which we evaluate teachers. And it's pretty clear that they're expected to teach curriculum written by the state. So if there's if there are teachers that are not following the state's guidance or our guidance, we will deal with that. So if you find a teacher that is, in fact, teaching some form of critical race theory, you will correct that. That is, that, that is a personnel matter. You know, we can't talk about that publicly, but yes, we have a process okay. for addressing that. I appreciate that. That's all the questions I have, Madam Chair. Anyone else? M Mr. Cohen? Well, since you kept citing me, um, the, just, uh, I guess what, what I think, and I tried to convey this to a couple of school board members who I communicated with, was because they were not getting the emails and the phone calls that the, the various members on this, this body were. And uh, so I, I just want to make sure if a parent feels that in any way, shape, or form, anything in the classroom, whether it's Keynesian versus supply side, or it's critical race theory, or it's um, the, the, the pronoun issue, if they do not feel comfortable going to the first level, which is the classroom teacher, and often they don't want to go that level, right. as you well know, and they don't feel comfortable going to the administration, and for whatever reason they don't feel going to the school board member, um, is it your contention that they should feel comfortable reaching out to you in your office to express that information so that it can be handled if they have concerns? Two, two comments. First of all, I'm the interim superintendent, but previously I was associate superintendent for instruction. So I think I have a pretty good idea what we teach, or at least what we're supposed to teach. And under me is the entire curriculum department. They, their direct reports to me. So I would encourage uh, folks if they have questions about Again, first of all, I'd say to the public, go on, on the Virginia Department of Education website or our website and look at the curriculum. So uh, it's accessible to you. So again, the answer, the short, to answer your question, I have no problem with that whatsoever. And, and the, the reason why I bring that up is because the, uh, I'm very well aware of the social studies curriculum, but many of the individuals who have either communicated at that, uh, that podium or sent emails uh, were talking about other disciplines. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I've <laughs> repeatedly said, not happening in social studies. Um, one of somebody in my department who I have a great deal of respect for is teaching the African American history class and is like, no, we're not doing these things. But the, the public comments have been disciplines that were not social studies. So that's why I think that I, I, I and I'm not, I've seen heads bobbing, so I'll feel comfortable. I think that's where our body was feeling uh, uncomfortable, that people were coming to us mm -hmm. with concerns and, and they just want to be able to know that they can go to the appropriate channels um, to deal with it. So, Mr. Cohen, this is not a comment I had planned to make, but I'm prepared to make it. Um, this is a distraction for us, to quite be quite honest. So if, I, if we continue to get questions among our staff about this, I will direct them not to respond. We have more important work to do. And I, and I, and I hate to be that kind of har that harsh, but I'm prepared to do that. We have important work to do to make up for the last 18 months. That's where our focus is. Miss um, Lamb had her hand on the there. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to address a comment that you made because I I really sure I couldn't have heard that right. Is I thought you said that, and I'm looking at our staff. So I don't know school staff, but I thought you said something that you can't control the performance of your staff. I can't did I misunderstand that? You did misunderstand that. I said, well, I, I can't scroll, control an individual decision by an individual staff member. I can respond to it, but okay. I can't control what they do. None of us can. Well, okay, to your point, because I was sitting there going, and I'm looking at our county administrator. If we had staff that did something egregious, then we would fire him. You know, that, <laughs> exactly. that's it. That's who we fire. Exactly. Okay, all right. So, look, look, I'm okay. not afraid of accountability. The, the okay. board, the board has two employees, the superintendent and the board clerk. That's so right. if, if, that, if that's a reflection of my evaluation, I'm not afraid of accountability. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, sir. And we're the same way. Okay, thank you. Mr. Snelling. Madam Chairman, I'm, Doctor, I, with all due respect, I'm very concerned about your last comment. Uh, what you're saying right now is that from this day forward, unless I misunderstood you, that you don't want to hear any more complaints about critical race theory, you don't want any more complaints about pronouns or anything else because you got more important things to do. And I'm sure you do. I know the struggles you've got from buses to lack of teachers and everything else. But are you telling the, the people of this county that this is it? I've answered the question to told them. What I'm saying to you, what I'm suggesting to you is that we are focusing on unfinished learning. That is, that is the highest priority among our staff. It's certainly my expectation. And if they're not focused on that, we're going to deal with it. But you're not going to take any more complaints. I can't control the complaints we get. I can control, only control how I respond to them. I don't want to get into a contest here. I really don't. And the hour's getting late. Uh, but it concerns me when you say that we're not going to respond. To I didn't more. say that. I said, I, I, I said, you your question, I if I remember, again, I don't want to argue with you either. It's not, no, sir. not my nature to do so. Um, I think what I suggested was that I'm going to encourage our staff to focus on the most important thing right now, okay. which is recovering from the last 18 months of the pandemic. Okay. I think Fair that's enough. what you would expect me to do. Absolutely. I think that's our duty to the public. I know that's what our board expects. That's our number one priority. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Is it my turn yet? <laughs> okay. So just a couple quick questions. I think all this school, the public schools in Virginia teach the Virginia Department of Education curriculum. Correct. But I think what we're hearing from constituents is how individual teachers are choosing to educate that particular curriculum. I can tell you that you have spiked our ratings because my phone keeps blowing up um, with examples of issues that parents have had in the schools. So my first question to you is, if a teacher, for example, had a child that was required by Google form and a required field to fill out the he, his, him um, pronouns, where should they direct those types of complaints going forward? Initially to the teacher and to the school staff. Uh. And then how will, will you guys be providing a list of complaints back to your school board or making a list public to the, to the community? Well, typically, if there's a parent who has a concern at the school level, what we would expect them to do is to begin, you know, initially connecting at the school level. As, as you, you know this, most of our families engage 
with schools at the school level. So to the extent that we can resolve it at the school level, we certainly will. And so I guess my question then just ties into, so like if I'm working with Fred and we've got 100 different complaints in one department, I would expect him at some level to bring that to us and say, guys, I think we might have a problem in this particular class in this particular school, or for our example, in this particular department. How will you track that then if it's really sort of self-governed within the teacher and within the school? So you know this, uh, that we, we, we engage with our, our, our leadership every week uh, by level, elementary, middle, and high. So we have regular meetings with our principals every single week. We have a once a month all principals meeting. Um, so typically if we're, if we're hearing some major concern, we're going to address it directly with our staff when that concern arises. That's, that's part of our operation protocol. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. Um, so I did a, a little perusing. Now, I don't have kids in, in Stafford schools, so when I was here, I don't have kids at all, so not just not, they're, they're not in Stafford schools, but I did a little bit of research uh, because I was very unfamiliar with some of the complaints that I was receiving from constituents. So I went on your website, and I ended up on your uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion cultural sensitivity page. And on there, there was a link to the National Equity Project. Why do you guys have a link to the National Equity Project on that website? Well, they've done some, I mean, I can't, I'll have to have uh, Ms. Ms. Bande speak to that. Um, the National, National Equity Project is just one of, among many resources that work with school divisions across the country. So they're a resource to us. So that's concerning to me because their foundational principles when you go to their website is the education of critical race theory. And all of their fundamental principles under there are critical race theory. So I was able, without having kids in the school, to click two buttons and end up on something that educates critical race theory. Well, so I think those kinds of things are things that our parents are seeing, which definitely aid to the concerns that they may be having. So maybe there's some misunderstanding of what critical race theory is. My understanding of critical race theory is that it's something that's taught at the higher ed level, and that focuses on, the, on, on law schools in particular. We're not a higher ed institution and we're not a law school. So again, we're focused on the content and the curriculum standards set by the state. Well, I don't have the definition right in front of me, but I can tell you when you Wikipedia it, it's definitely not a law school-based curriculum. Um, so anyway, okay, I don't want to take up more time. Does anybody else have anything else? Mr. Snellings? Uh, I don't have any more questions for Dr. Jones. I do want to thank you for being here. Yes, sure, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman, I'd like to uh, bring back to the next meeting a resolution by the board uh, stating our opposition to any to critical race theory, um, the request to identify pronouns from students. Um, bring that back to the board so that we can, uh, and I'll ask the board to look at it and pass it. And I'd like to tie that to funding, uh, funding being any monies that's used for this type of instruction uh, be withheld by the board. Madam okay. Chairman, I'll Thank second you. that motion. If it's not a motion suggestion, I'm behind it. How about that? Uh, okay, Ms. Baumke, really quickly. Um, I would just like to add to what Mr. Snellings mentioned, what you uh, referenced regarding the double clicks on the that link, um, because that group should not be tied into this, because it's it's all about critical race theory with that particular link in that national organization. Okay, so Mr. Snellings, do you have a motion to bring back a resolution for the board? And do you want it on unfinished business or new business? Uh, next week, needs to be, it can be on, I think it can be on unfinished business, can it, Madam Attorney? Uh, unfinished business, yeah, motion to bring that back to the board at our next meeting, which is, I believe, September 21st. Very good, and I have a second by Supervisor Shelton. Is there any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'd like the board to go ahead and cast your votes. And tally the votes, please. And that motion carries five with two absent. Thank you so much, Dr. Jones, for Thank coming. You. Appreciate it.